One of the most common applications of 14C is dating. We can read a material's inner clock by examining the ratio of two different types of carbon atoms. Every living thing is made of carbon. Plants grab carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and use it to form complex organic molecules. Animals get their carbon from eating these plants. But there is more than one form of carbon. So most carbon is in the form of C12 that has six protons and six neutrons. However, high in the atmosphere, cosmic rays hit nitrogen atoms and form 14C radiocarbon, which is composed of six protons and eight neutrons. And C12 and C14 behave similarly, except that radiocarbon is unstable. So once an animal or plant dies, radiocarbon in its body or material will start to go away. And every 5,730 years, about half of the radiocarbon atoms will decay into nitrogen. This is known as its radioactive half-life. So after one half-life, there will be half of the 14C it started with and after another there will be a fourth, and after another there will be an eighth, and so on. So in contrast, the C12 has remained constant in that material. So by measuring the ratio of the 14C to 12C, we can measure how many years have passed since that animal or plant has died. Carbon dating works for materials up to 50,000 years old, and for older things you'll need unstable elements with longer half-lives, which we also measure at the CAMS facility. The technique we use here is called accelerated mass spectrometry. It uses an accelerator uh, to give ions of interest a lot of energy um, so that we can filter them and use certain kinds of detectors to count specific ions uh, of a particular isotope of interest. We measure all types of samples um, from organics like plants, soil, wood, uh, corals, bone, teeth. The technique was developed in about, initially in about 1977, and we have uh, been in business here since about 1987, uh, making measurements in a range of isotopes that are of interest, one of the main ones being radiocarbon. Um, it's used, amongst other things, for radiocarbon dating, um, archaeological samples, and other types of materials. You have a material that is made up of all different types of atoms, but what we want to measure is the carbon. So when you are looking at a sample, what you care about is how much carbon is in that sample. Basically, we take a sample that we've prepared and put it into what's called an ion source. It goes through a pretreatment process, gets loaded into a quartz tube and combusted to form CO2, and then that CO2 gets um, reduced to graphite, and that graphite is what we run on the accelerator. The whole pretreatment process is getting to CO2. And what I'll be showing you in the lab is ABA, which is acid-base acid. So you're just cleaning the outside of the material to make sure that you're dating the right components. Predominantly used acid is hydrochloric acid. And the base we use most of the time is sodium hydroxide. You hit the sample with one normal HCl and then several base rinses until you're ready for your final acid rinse, again with one normal HCl, and then you rinse it with milliQ water and it dries overnight, and then that sample gets loaded into a quartz tube, evacuated, so you have a completely evacuated quartz tube that you seal with a torch, and then that tube gets combusted at 900 degrees C, and that CO2 produced from the combustion is what we reduce to graphite. In putting the samples into our ion source, we basically have put them into small sample holders, what we call sample holders. They're basically aluminum or stainless steel, particularly shaped um, cartridges that have a small hole in the front in, into which we mount our sample. We then take those small cartridges and put them in a larger stainless steel wheel that'll hold 64 of these, up to 64, and we place that inside uh, the ion source and inside the ion source is a rotating mechanism that allows us to go to any one of those particular 64 and push, push that sample out of the wheel up into the ion source where we make our measurement and then retract it, rotate the wheel and put another sample up into this where we're making the measurement. Some of the work we've done here has demonstrated that heart cells 
um, turn over at a rate that people didn't expect and raise questions about whether we can stimulate processes to repair heart muscle after, say, a heart attack. We can use radiocarbon to address important carbon cycling research questions, such as uh, terrestrial carbon stocks, which are important to have well-defined. We can examine the proportion of uh, natural and anthropogenic carbon sources in the atmosphere because radiocarbon can fingerprint the origin of carbon dioxide and methane. Um, and we can also investigate the response of ecosystems to future environmental change. We have measurement techniques that are important to some of the national security applications we have. The measurements of uh, uranium plutonium isotopes and, and a few other actinides, um, measurements of ID-129 potentially are of use. There's ways we can use this research uh, to help predict how future environments will respond to changes in climate, changes in sea level, changes in seawater sea circulation. You can get very, very discrete measurements on the accelerator that you can't get in any other facility.